bar graphs. Have you seen charts like these on TV or in the newspapers? You must have also come across diagrams like these in newspapers and magazines. What are all these things called? They are called charts or graphs. There are many different types of graphs as you just had a look. We have bar graphs, line graphs and pie charts. The type of graph that you will use depends on the information that you have to share. What are the different things you can record in a graph? Graphs are used to convey information such as cricket scores, votes obtained in elections, weather forecast, rainfall, literacy, population and many more such things. Now, take a look at this graph. This graph is made up of bars, so it is called a bar graph. As you can see, all the bars have the same width and are equally spaced from each other. However, each bar has a different height. It is the height of the bar that tells us its value. Here, we know that this graph shows us the average runs that a batsman made each year. As you can see, the average has changed every year. You can quickly see how it has changed, how it has increased or decreased over the years. This is a very easy way of analyzing information. Such a presentation of data is known as a bar diagram or a bar graph. Do you think it's easy to analyze information presented like this? Yes, you can quickly say at a glance in which year the batsman had the best performance and in which year his performance was poor. You do not have to search through a table and look for the highest and lowest values. So, you can already see how bar graphs make information simple for us. So, when was the performance of the batsman the best? It was in 2002. And when was it the worst? The next year, 2003. Let us now study how to draw a bar graph. Now, let us make sure we know how to read a bar graph before we start drawing one. Here, we have a bar graph of the number of children who passed the math competency exam in 2002, 2003 and 2004. Observe it and try to answer some questions based on this graph. In which year did the least number of children pass the exam? Here, we have to find the least, that means the minimum. So we look for the bar which is the shortest. That is this one. And what year is it? 2002. So the answer is in the year 2002. How many children passed in 2004? We first locate the bar that will tell us the data of 2004. That is this one. Now we have to see what the value at the top of this bar is. So we follow the top to the left and see that it is at 50. So that is the answer. 50 students passed. How many more children passed in 2004 than in 2003? We have to find the difference in the students of 2004 and 2003. So first, we locate the bars. This is the bar of 2004 and this one is for 2003. Now we have to find the difference in the values of these bars. What is the difference? It is this. And that comes to 50 minus 40, which is 10. So, 10 more students passed. Alright, so now that we are sure we know how to read a bar graph, let's get down to the basics of drawing one. Since it's a graph that we are drawing, what do we need? We need a graph paper. So, here is a graph paper for us to draw a bar graph. Here, you can see some thin lines and some bold lines. The bold lines are 1 cm apart. Between two bold lines, you can see some thin lines. In this graph paper, there are four thin lines between two 1 cm lines. So that 1 cm length is divided into five parts. So each thin line is 2 mm away from the next one. Sometimes the 1 cm segment is divided into 10 parts. Then each part is 1 millimeter wide. Depends on what graph paper you have chosen, 
Now, let us proceed with this one. What do we do now? We have to draw our axis. The x-axis and the y-axis. So, we draw a horizontal line like this close to the bottom of the graph. This is the x-axis. We draw arrows on both the sides and label it as x-axis. In the same way, we draw the y-axis. We draw it as a vertical line close to the left of the paper, like this. And we draw arrows on both the sides and label it as y-axis. The point where the x and the y-axis intersect is the origin. So we are all set to draw the graph. But we need some data to construct the graph from. So let us use this table. This table tells us the marks that Sunita obtained in the final exam in four subjects. So we are going to draw a bar graph based on this information. Now we have to decide what to mark on which axis. We take the quantity that we have to compare on the y-axis and the fixed things on the x-axis usually. So let us mark the x-axis as the subject axis and the y-axis as the marks axis. Now, we can move on to the next step. Since we have to plot the marks, let's take a careful look at the marks in the table. As you can see, they are all multiples of 10 and the range is between 50 and 90. So, we have to pick a scale so that the marks can be plotted properly on the y-axis. Since there are no marks below 50, we can start from 40 and go on in jumps of 10 marks for 1 cm. So actually, that is our scale. 1 cm is equal to 10 marks. And now let's mark the marks on the y-axis. We start at 40 and go on to 90 like this. And then we write the names of the subjects on the x-axis. When you mark the subjects on the x-axis, make sure the distance between the subjects and the distance of the first subject from the y-axis is all the same. Otherwise, the graph looks quite bad and it is quite difficult to read. Now, let us start drawing the bars. We start from the first subject that is Hindi. Since the marks obtained are 60, we draw a rectangle on Hindi that reaches up to level 60 on the y-axis that is here. So, let us draw a rectangle like this. Now make sure you take a suitable thickness for the rectangle so that the graph looks alright. Use the same thickness for all other rectangles. Now let's mark maths. Maths is at 90 which is here. So we mark the rectangle for 90. Now let's mark science. Science marks are 70. So that's up to here. And we mark the bar for science. And what about English? English marks are 50. So, we mark that level and draw the rectangle. And that makes our graph. And don't forget, every graph has to have a title. So, what title can we give this graph? We can call it Sunita's Marks. And since the graph is complete, we do not need the table anymore. We can get all the information just from the graph. And with that, our graph is ready. What are the points to remember while we draw a bar graph? A graph should always be drawn to scale. Scale should be written in the upper right corner of the graph paper. The width of columns or bars can be any suitable width, but all columns in the same graph should have the same width. The distance between columns and distance of the first column from origin should always be the same. The x and the y axis have to be marked with the quantities that are being plotted on them. Let us now draw another graph with this data. We are going to have the price on the y-axis and the grain on the x-axis. So let us put that in. Now decide the scale. On the y-axis we have the price. Take a look at the values of price. They are all in the table of 5. So let us take 1 cm as 5 rupees on the y-axis. And now, let us mark the y-axis. Since the lowest value is 10, let us start at 10 and go ahead in multiples of 5. So we mark the y-axis and then we mark the grains on the x-axis. Now the jowar is at 10 rupees, so that is this level. We will mark the rectangle like this. Moong is 40, so 40 is this level. 
and we mark the rectangle for moon. Rice is 20 rupees, so this is the level for rice. We draw the rectangle here. What about wheat? Wheat is for 15 rupees, so we mark the level for wheat. And we draw the rectangle here. And what title can we give this graph? Types of grain or the prices of grain or the grain and its prices. And our graph is complete. Let us now draw one more graph for this data. We have years in population. We are going to have the population on the y-axis and the years on the x-axis. So let us put that in. Now, decide the scale. On the y-axis, we have the population. Take a look at the values of population. They are all in the table of 2. Now, let us take 1 cm as 2 crores on the y-axis. And now, let us mark the y-axis. We can just start at 0 and go ahead in steps of 2. And let's mark the x-axis. We are going to mark all the years on the x-axis. Now look at the first entry, 1981. The population is 6 crores. This is 6 crores and we draw the rectangle on 1981. What is the next one? 1991 and the population is 8 crores. This is the 8 crores level and we draw a rectangle here. What's the next one? 2001 and the population is 10 crores. So this is the level of 10 crores and we can draw the rectangle like this. And that gives us the graph. And what title can we give this graph? Growth of population. And now we don't need the table anymore. And that gives us our ready bar graph. Did you understand the bar graphs? Yes!